Hello everybody and welcome to this demo of how to build and train machine learning model with Amazon SageMaker and Amazon Redshift. My name is Shonak Chandra. I am a senior partner solutions architect specializing in Amazon Redshift. In this video, I'll walk you through how to use SageMaker Python notebook to build and train a machine learning model using data from Amazon Redshift. Amazon Redshift is a fully managed petabyte scale cloud data warehouse. Many customers modernize their data warehouse by running machine learning to predict future events and take preemptive measures. I will be using Amazon SageMaker machine learning algorithm DeepAir. The Amazon SageMaker DeepAir forecasting algorithm is a supervised learning algorithm for forecasting scalar or one-dimensional time series using recurrent neural networks. Let's get started. For this demo, I will use New York Taxi data, which is available in Registry of Open Data on AWS. And I have already loaded this data in an Amazon Redshift table called NYC Green Taxi. This table has trip information for green cab company in the New York City. Some of the fields are pickup date time, drop off date time, passenger count, payment type, tip amount, total amount, trip distance, trip type, and vendor ID. In order to use Amazon SageMaker, I will go to the SageMaker service within AWS Management Console and select Notebook Instances under Notebook. Here I have already set up a Notebook Instance and this is called Redshift DPA Demo 1. So I'm going to click and open that one. Since Amazon Redshift cluster runs on a VPC, I need to make sure that the Notebook is configured in a VPC within the same subnet and the security group would let me connect to the Redshift cluster. So I have the subnet, which is my public subnet here, and I have the security group here. So I'm here in the Amazon SageMaker Python notebook. And in this notebook, I have organized many different cells that has a Python code in it, uh, and I will execute each of these cells one after another. So I'm right now in the very first cell where I have imported various Python packages, namely SageMaker, Boto3, S3FS. So these are the packages that's gonna let me connect to Amazon or AWS services. I also have uh, packages like Base64, JSON, these are file utility packages, PsychoPG2 that I'm gonna use to connect to Amazon Redshift cluster using the PsychoPG2 JDBC driver. I do also have imported matplotlib to visualize some of my machine learning uh, test algorithm. So let me run this package, uh, this cell. In this particular cell, I have overridden some of the default behavior such as S3 bucket and S3 prefixes I'm going to use for Redshift to write onto. In this big cell, I have written a procedure or several procedures that I'm going to use to connect to the Redshift cluster using credentials stored in Amazon Secrets Manager. So I'm going to execute this cell. And the very next cell, uh, I have uh, written a function that calls that package, calls the procedure that I have defined in the previous cell to connect to the Redshift cluster. After connected to the Redshift cluster, I'm going to execute a SQL script that going, that going to run into the Redshift cluster and going to unload the data into an Amazon S3 bucket that SageMaker is going to use for that data. It's interesting to see this script, this SQL script, uh, is uh, on the fly that runs on the fly from Amazon SageMaker to Amazon Redshift. Uh, if you look into this kit, this looks um, into the data in the NYC Green Taxi, and it formats the data in such a way that the SageMaker Deep AR algorithm can understand. So I'm going to execute this step. So as you can see, this step already got executed and query execution complete. So in this cell, I'm going to run the cell to get the data in the Panda data frame from the S3 location. So I just executed that step. In this cell, uh, the data that I have uh, collected into the Panda data frame is going to reshape into a time series format. Next, visualize the data using matplotlib. All right. So if we look into the data set here that I have just downloaded from Amazon S3 into the time series data format, I have the data since January 2019 
till July 2019. And it's already in the time series format. So I can use the DPR algorithm now. Next, let's train and test split this data. Unlike any standard machine learning task, such as classification and regression, one typically obtains this test uh, and test split by randomly separating examples into train and test sets. But in forecasting, it is important to do this train test split based on the time rather than the time series. So here in this cell, I have the time series frequency of two hour, and we're going to predict for seven days. So let's run this cell. For the, for the train test split, I have uh, separated the test data set, um, or actually the train data set starting from the January 1, 2019. And my train data set is going to be ended in April 1, 2019. Next, put that into a training data format. As test data, we will consider time series extending beyond the training range. This will be used for computing test score by using the trained model to forecast their training seven days and comparing predictions with actual weeks. To evaluate our model performance on more than one week, we generate test data that extends to one, two, three, and four weeks beyond the training range. This way we perform rolling evaluation of our model. So let's execute this step. Let's now write the dictionary to JSON Lions file format that DPVR understands. Now that we have the data files locally, let us copy them to S3 where DPVR can access them. So it's already been written into the S3. Now let's have a look at what we just wrote to Amazon S3. So this is the data that got written into Amazon S3 that Deep AR is going to work on. If you look into closely into this data, it is a JSON formatted file. And as we already described before, JSON lines format. It has two attributes. One is the start, which is the date when the training has started. This is January 1, 2019. And the target is an array formatted file or array formatted data set. And these are the different, uh, different values across the time series data that designates the number of rides uh, in the taxi ride data set. So let me execute that step. Okay, so we'll train the model now. Here, we define the estimator that will launch the training job. Next, we need to set the hyperparameter. So let's uh, run the uh, estimator. Next, we need to set the hyperparameter for this training job. For example, frequency of the time series used, number of data points the model will look at in the past, number of predicted data points, other hyperparameters that concerning this model to train, that is number of layers, number of cells per layer, likelihood function, and the training options like number of epochs, batch sizes, learning rates. We'll use default parameters for every optional parameter in this case. So we are ready to launch the training job. As part of the training job, SageMaker will start an EC2 instance, download the data from S3, start training the model, and save the trained model. So let's kick off the training job here. So this training job is going to execute for some time, and until then I'm going to pause this video here. The training job has passed the test set, Accuracy metrics for the forecast are computed and logged. You can use these to optimize the parameters and tune your model or use SageMaker's automatic model tuning service to tune the model. Note that we have trained the model and we can see all the different metrics that has been generated out of this model. These metrics are total time um, execution, which is in form of you know, count, max, sum, mean, setup time, and also across various different dimensions. So the total time of this training model uh, took place in 18 minutes, close to 19 minutes here. Since we passed a test set in this example, accuracy metrics for the forecast are computed. 
okay so um, next we are going to deploy this model and we can deploy the model by creating an endpoint we can use the predictor object to generate predictions um, and here we define the deep air predictor class where we define the predict object uh, that's going to create the endpoint and the endpoint is going to have this predict uh, predict object which is going to get executed every time we ask the endpoint um, to generate prediction for us so let's execute that predict function so the predict function has been defined now we are going to create and deploy the model and create the endpoint that we can query for our dpr predictor class okay so this is going to take few minutes and i'm going to pause the video again point creation has been completed so we can now use the predicted object to generate predictions so below we define a plotting function that queries the model and displays the forecast so let's uh, execute the plotting function here um, we can interact with this function um, to look at the forecast of count of rides in 15 minutes of interval for every vendor at any point in time in the future and for each request the predictions are obtained by calling our sort model on the fly that means we are going to call the endpoint that we just defined so just to be clear here we forecast the right count after the weekend and we can select any time series and any forecast date and there will be a run internet button which we're going to show it very soon to generate the predictions from our SART endpoint and see the plot. So let's create the interact manual function here. So now we can interact with an endpoint using the run interact. Here we forecast the trip count after the weekend as I just said. And let's just uh, select the default uh, options here. So we have four different parameters or variable that we can adjust in order to run predictions. So we have the vendor ID. So we have just two vendor, vendor ID 0 and vendor ID 1. Um, forecast days, uh, by default we have chosen 51 days, but you can go up to um, 100 days uh, and as minimum as 0 days. So you're going to keep it 51 days by default. So this forecast day is the number of days from the day we stopped our training data, which is April 1, 2019. And the confidence interval. Um, this is gonna um, this is gonna tell how how accurate our um, our model is going to be, and you can um, also select um, the number of confidence interval by selecting the slider. We could also see uh, in the past how many days in the past the actual rides we want to see. That way we can you know visualize it more clearly how our predicted model um, is going to be plotting against our actual um, historical um, events. So you can go uh, by default, it's one week, but you can go as far as uh, uh, 17, uh, 19 weeks uh, prior to uh, the forecasting date. So let's, uh, let's just run Interact. As you can see, um, since our forecast day is 51 days, um, which is the day from um, 2019, April 1. So this is the date, uh, May 22nd, 2019. Uh, which is this point here that um, we have started making the predictions all the way um, to 29th of uh, May. And as you can see, this plot shows predictions that is target and P50 with 80% confidence. And the forecast window can be chosen by adjusting the forecast day slider, which is here. This is the number of days from the training end date. And the output also shows the actual data one week prior to this forecasting window which is this portion of the data, which is one week prior to 22nd of May. The black line, which is this black line here, is the target, and the blue line is the P50. It is evident that as we increase the confidence, the deviation from target will broaden, and vice versa. In other words, with the low confidence, the P50 deviates lesser than the higher confidence. So um, let's interact with a few different options. So if we lower the confidence interval, uh, keeping the vendor ID, forecast day, and history plot the same, and generate the prediction, we could see that the, the lower confidence 
the deviation uh, is much uh, much thinner. Um, on the other hand, if we just increase the confidence by sliding it to let's say 90 and then run interact. So the deviation has broadened considerably. As an extension, um, we can also write the predictions that we could run in, on many different uh, you know, variables. Uh, and we can write the prediction back into Redshift cluster for further analysis. And this can be done by modifying the deep AI predictor class that we have shown earlier. This ends this demo. I hope it was helpful and thanks for watching.